Hey everybody, Pocket Doc at Dark Angel Medical along with our trusty uh, sidekick PJ here. Uh, we're going to talk about a sucking chest wound and how to manage that today. Now we always talk about tourniquet the limbs, pack the junctions, seal the box. Well we've got videos on how to tourniquet the limbs and pack the junctions. Now we're going to talk about how to seal up this box. And the box is anything from the collarbone to the belly button, 360 degrees all the way around. So. In the event that I come upon a, uh, a victim uh, that has a penetrating thoracic injury, so there's a hole right here, it's a simulated hole here, and there's going to be one on the back here. So anytime I have any interruption, any kind of penetrating in injury into this thoracic cavity, i got to seal it up because if you remember from class, uh, the lungs expand through negative pressure. And if we've got positive pressure on the outside, that's going to rush in through that hole and collapse that lung. So. What we're going to do, we got a pair of the Halo Seals vent here, and we're going to go ahead and occlude one of the holes there. So if I have, I'm always going to check for secondary uh, injuries. So if I've got a smaller injury uh, and a larger injury, one that's potentially going to be more liable to vent passively, I'm going to go ahead and place the non-occlusive or the non-vented seal over the smaller hole here. So let's say this is like a, a, a a gunshot wound. We have a small entry here and a, or a small hole here and a larger hole here. We don't know which one's entry or which one's exit, but the typically, theoretically, the larger hole is going to be exit. So I would put the non-occlusive or the non-vented occlusive seal over the smaller wound because that one is more li more uh, is less likely to vent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my casualty, I'm going to have gloved up, make sure my scene's safe, take care of all my bleeding, and I'm going to have my casualty take a deep breath in. I'm going to have them blow out at the peak of exhalation. I'm going to wipe off all the blood and I'm going to seal the seal to that wound. And you see how I've got it covered up and I'm centered it as much as possible. Now, peels off of this. This is another non porous device, so always hold on to your extra stuff. All right, now, let's say I've got, I do some examination and I see my casualty's got a larger hole on the back. So, PJ, if you would go ahead and stand up, we'll turn around so you can get the back. Okay. So, on the back, the vented chest seal uh, is has a, a larger hole here, and this is a small membrane, and it's got four elliptical slits placed in different areas, and this is to allow the air to, if there's a positive pressure buildup in the in the chest, and this wound is positive, is passively venting, it's going to press up on that membrane, almost like a check valve, and it's going to exit out one of these vents. So, what I'll do on any kind of wound that is uh, actively or, uh, or passively venting. Take this off. Again, take a deep breath in, blow out. At the peak of exhalation, I'll wipe off all the blood and place this over the larger wound that is venting. So that way, if there is pressure build up in there. Now, go ahead and turn around. Let's say that, have a seat. Let's say all we have is the standard halo seals. Now these are these are non-venting, uh, and so uh, there's basically two of these right here in this pack in the standard halo seal. So if I've got those, what I would want to do is uh, just apply both of them down, and then I will watch for the signs and symptoms of attention in the thorax. And we're not going to get into the, all of that stuff. That's covered more in our class. We're just getting more of the mechanics of sealing it up. So you want to identify. You want to stop the hemorrhage. Make sure their airways open. Check their breathing. It's obviously going to be labored if we've lost ventilatory capacity, and then we want to apply seal to any existing wounds in this box. So we're at the peak of exhalation. We're going to have to take a deep breath, blow the breath out, wipe off any kind of any blood, seal it up, and then we would ass assess for secondary wounds. If uh, all you have is the non-vented seal here, and there are signs and symptoms of a pressure of pressure building up in the chest. You're going to go ahead and just burp the wound and hopefully bleed off some air, some excess air trapped within the chest cavity. So to have a take a deep breath, okay, blow out, okay, as he vents everything out at the peak of exhalation, I'm going to seal back up again. This is what we call burping the wound, okay. Uh, if he is conscious, if the victim is conscious, have them sit in a position of comfort and which, whichever they're able to breathe in the easiest. If they're unconscious, go ahead and stand up. Go ahead and lie down here on your affected side. So if they are unconscious, we're going to have them on their affected side. Okay, we're going to have them lying on their affected side because what this does, 
the affected side is going to be bad side down, good side up. Just remember those things, bad side down, good side up. What that does is allows the casualties uh, operable uh, uh, side to to move without any uh, any kind of restriction because if I place the good side of the ground I'm going to be putting all their body weight against the ground and, uh, and the good side so that's going to limit chest wall movement and that's going to limit your respiratory capability so remember tourniquet the limbs pack the junctions seal the box keep it simple